Epilepsy. A seizure may take many forms. In a major seizure, there is a sudden spasm of muscle producing rigidity and the victim will fall down. Tonic phase. Jerking movements of the head, arms and legs may occur. Clonic phase. The victim becomes unconscious, which may be associated with noisy breathing, salivation and urinary incontinence. Seizures not resulting in loss of consciousness require little first aid other than reassurance and protection of the victim from injury. The victim should be managed as for any unconscious person. You should remove the victim from danger or remove any dangerous objects which might cause injury to the victim. Avoid restraining the victim during the seizure unless this is essential to avoid injury. Not force the victim's mouth open nor attempt to insert any object into the mouth. Lay the victim down and turn the victim on the side as soon as possible to maintain and establish an airway. Check for breathing and, if resuscitation is needed, begin CPR. Reassure the victim who will be dazed, confused or drowsy. Seek medical advice as soon as possible, preferably by calling an ambulance. Dial triple zero. Diabetes. The signs and symptoms of diabetic shock are changes in the levels of consciousness, rapid breathing, rapid pulse, and the victim may feel ill. Treatment. Monitor their ABCs. If they are conscious, look for a medic alert tag, usually worn on the wrist or around the neck. If the victim can take food or fluids, they can be given sugar in the form of lollies, fruit juices, or non-diet soft drinks. If they are unconscious, call medical assistance immediately. Drugs. Sometime during your working life, you may be confronted by a patron or customer who is affected by drugs. What are the signs and symptoms of drug use? And when do you administer first aid? There are three classifications of drugs. Depressants, stimulants and hallucinogens. Marijuana is a depressant. These drugs slow mental and physical activity. Drugs such as amphetamines and cocaine are stimulants. These speed up mental and physical activity. Drugs such as LSD and some synthetic drugs are hallucinogens. These drugs can cause changes in mood, delusions, intense fear or panic, intense happiness and vivid hallucinations. Care for substance misuse or abuse. Check for danger. Monitor the ABCs and call the Poisons Information Centre or medical assistance. Find out which drug was taken, how much and when. Calm and reassure the victim. Maintain body temperature and withdraw if the victim becomes violent. Remember, if you suspect a designer drug has been taken, inform ambulance personnel. Of course, the most popular drug of all is alcohol. Alcohol. Signs and symptoms of intoxication are drowsiness, confusion, slurred speech, slow heart and breathing rate, poor coordination, smell of alcohol and loss of muscle control. To care for an intoxicated person, offer them safe, reliable transport home or to hospital. If they are unconscious, call for medical assistance immediately. If they become violent, leave them alone and call the police. Poisons. Every home and every workplace contain products that when consumed by people are poisonous. For example, cleaning products. If someone consumes a poison, we must act and act quickly. To treat for poisoning, find out what sort of poison was taken and call the Poisons Information Centre. If there are instructions on the container, follow these. Personal Hygiene. Throughout this video, you have noted that I've been wearing these latex gloves. This is to protect me against infectious diseases such as hepatitis and AIDS. You too, as a first aider, must be aware of personal hygiene. You can reduce the risk of infection by avoiding touching bodily fluids, using latex gloves and using a mouth barrier when giving rescue breathing and CPR. 
This is one type of mouth barrier. It works simply by opening it up and placing the mouthpiece in the mouth of the victim. Make sure your first aid kit has a mouth barrier as well as gloves. Good hygiene standards prevent the spreading of infectious diseases through direct contact with infected persons, indirect contact through faeces, air conditioning or other sources, or through a host via either insects or worms. Good hygiene standards protect the first aider both prior, during and after treatment is given. Prior. Prior includes vaccinations for diseases such as hepatitis B. Ensure all equipment is clean and replenished and all open wounds are covered. Ensure hands are washed and nails are clean and rinse with an antiseptic. During. Your maintained hygiene standards will minimise blood spills and disposing of hazardous waste. Limit your exposure to bodily fluids and avoid speaking over the wound. After. Cleaning up both the casualty, yourself and the area. Mop up any blood and dispose of dressings, bandages, gloves and soil clothing. Thoroughly wash your hands with soap and water even if gloves were used. Eye injuries. In treating all eye injuries, reassure and calm the casualty. Hands must be clean, use sterile or clean dressings as the eye is particularly susceptible to infection. If possible, ask the casualty to remove contact lenses before the eye is treated. Do not remove them yourself. If contact lenses cannot be removed, treat as if not in place. If attending to your own injury, use a mirror. Ensure good lighting to the casualty's eye. Foreign bodies, minor. Small and loose. 1. Examine the eye. Seat the casualty, place a light to the side of the eye and tilt the casualty's head back. Stand behind the casualty and separate the eyelids. Ask the casualty to look right, left, up and down. 2. Remove the object. If the object can be seen, gently wash the eye with sterile saline or if not available, clean water. If unsuccessful, try to remove the object from the white of the eye only by using a moistened swab or cloth, preferably from the corner of the eye. If the object is on the upper lid, pull the upper lid down and outwards over the lower lid. 3. If the object cannot be removed, Cover the eye with an eye pad or clean cloth. Secure a position. And four, seek medical assistance. Caution. Do not examine the eye if the injury is severe. Cover the eye, seek medical assistance, and deter the casualty from rubbing the eye. Caution. Do not remove any object from the pupil, the dark region, or the iris, coloured region. Do not remove any object that is sticking firmly on or into the eye. Foreign bodies, major, embedded or impaled. Number one, lay the casualty on their back and support the head. Keep the casualty quiet and still. Advise the casualty not to move the eyes. Two, cover the eye. Use an eye pad or a clean cloth with a hole cut in it. Thick pads above and below the eye may be used. Place a ring pad, paper or plastic cup over the cloth. Secure ring pad or cup with bandage. Encourage the casualty to keep eyes still by closing the uninjured eye and keeping the head still. Reassure the casualty, especially those with both eyes injured or covered. Explain that covering both eyes helps prevent movement of the injured eye. Three. Seek medical assistance. While waiting for assistance, monitor and record vital signs. Airway, breathing, circulation and level of consciousness. Caution. Do not remove any foreign body that is embedded. Caution. 
Ensure the cup or bandage does not apply pressure to the end of the embedded object. 